Good day, everyone across North America. This is John Garmendi with Sony's Professional Solutions of America, and I thank you for joining us for another of our Tech Tuesday series of webinars started in response to the COVID tragedy to keep you, our customers, channel partners, integrators, and consultants up to date and informed on Sony's latest products and solutions. Today's topic will be an overview of Crystal LED modular direct view display system, including an overview of the technology and a review of some of the applications. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes before we begin. I will put uh, in the chat box some of the relevant links to information and uh, more detailed data on the Crystal LED solution. And I will also post a link to the recorded, uh, the recorded webinars that we had previously done in this series. This one should be listed up there on the YouTube channel by the end of this week. And joining me today is, uh, as our main presenter, Jason Metcalf, sales support engineer for our Crystal LED solutions and 4K SXRD projectors. And uh, Daisuke Johnny Beppu, he's the product and marketing manager for our Crystal LED presentation systems. With that, I'll turn it over to Jason and I'll see you back uh, for Q&A. Oh, and by the way, please submit your questions via the question chat panel. Thanks, take it away, Jason. Thanks, John. Um, John said, my name is Jason Metcalf. I'm the SSE for, for CLED. And um, today we're going to be talking about um, this product, which is our direct view LED display. Um, our motto for CLED, uh, as you can see, is uh, don't just display, astonish. And I think this phrase is important for, uh, for two reasons. You know, one is that as direct view LED, you know, continues to grow in the market, it really is um, becoming a sort of future technology for for displays of all of all kinds. Um, we're seeing it, you know, purposed in basically any application which we would see a projector or a flat panel display, um, and in many use cases that you know we're still discovering as as time goes on. Um, and the other reason why I really like this phrase is that, you know, for those of you who, who have seen CLED in, uh, in person, um, it really does sort of transcend what a, a normal display is. It, it is uh, incredibly lifelike. It uh, really has, um, you know, the ability to, to make you forget that you're just looking at a, at a display, you know, and that you're actually there. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, you know, I wanted to really cover how, you know, these three elements of, uh, of our product um, between technology, installation, and content work together to create a really incredible uh, final, final product. Um, and that's where the kind of subtitle of this presentation comes from, Fundamentals of an Astonishing uh, Picture. So um, with that said, um, we have a short video that uh, we'd like you to see. It's, um, it's a customer experience video from one of our key installations for CLED in, in Yokohama, Japan. It's Shiseido Cosmetics uh, Customer Experience Center there, which is uh, only about a few years old now. And it really showcases how these three elements come together to uh, create an incredibly unique space um, for this for this value customer of ours. So um, it's a short video, so please uh, uh, hang on and 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 enjoy. Um, just a note that if you are listening on your phone, um, the audio for the video is not going to come through your phone, but uh, it is subtitled. So if you can't listen on your computer, um, you'll still be able to follow along and and understand what's going on. So so I'll be back in in just a minute.
いろんなところに ＬＥＤ ビジョンってあるじゃないですか結構いろんなところを見てきたんですねでそれぞれいいなと思ってたんですけれども今回かなり近くで見れるような場所にあるのでそのつぶつぶがやっぱり気になるなとそんな話をしてた時にたまたま紹介されたのがシーレットだったということです品川で見せていただいたんですけどまあやばいやばいなやばいものを見てしまったと臨場感っていうかそのリアル感っていうんですかねやっぱりそれはもう半端なかったですね僕たち実現したかったのはあそこの壁面があたかも一つの世界みたいな感じになってるようなものが欲しかったんですね普通のこうマルチモニターだったりとか、まあ、有機 EL もそうなんですけれどもやっぱりこうフレームが出てきてしまうフレームが出てきてしまうと臨場感というのはなくなるじゃないですかそれがこうシーレットだとそれがもう全くないっていうところが大きなところかなとは思います設置してる様子もそうですしミリ単位でこう調整されて、まあ、0 5ミリのズレを直すために全部剥がしてやり直すとかもうやっぱそこのこだわり感っていうかかっこいいなと思いましたね。正直あの映せるものがないと思ったので実際オープンに向けてどうするのかなどうしようかなっていうところで、まあ、ソニーさんと相談させていただいて没入感っていうものをこう表現できるもので、まあ、やっぱりこうシーレットを入れたからこそできるものを見せてほしいっていうか自分も見たくなったっていうのが一番だと思います。はい、今回設置してるののはもう床面からもうそのまま設置しているようなものなので、もう本当に間近で見れるので、そのクオリティの高さっていうのがあの体感できると思います。ここで資生堂が目指すビューティーの世界っていうのを表現するためには。やはりこの大きさのこのクオリティのものっていうのがやっぱ必要なのかなというふうに思いましたはい And then, of course,、um, you have to have you know, great content that's going to showcase you know, your brand or, or you know, whatever content you're trying to show.、Um, and I wanted to speak to you know, how to maybe take full advantage of that and how to create the best content that,、uh, that can be seen on the display. So, so you know, maybe that's. A little esoteric, so let's you know get into some of the specifics of the technology.、Um, direct view LED,、um, for those that don't know, is a, a type of emissive display. It's similar to OLED technology,、um, but whereas with OLED, you'll have an array of typically white、uh, LEDs, organic LEDs, that shine through some sort of、uh, matrix of, of filters. Um, and then some other layers, things like that. With direct view LED, you're, you're looking directly at、uh, three LEDs per pixel. And this is across、um, you know, any of the full color range direct view LED products out there.、Um, and this is, of course, in, in contrast to a transmissive display like an LCD display, where you have some sort of backlight shining through a, a liquid crystal array. 
Um, so each of these technologies are, are great and they're continuing to evolve. Um, we're seeing new LCD technologies come onto the market uh, even today. Um, in fact, many manufacturers are, are moving towards some LCD technologies for displays um, because of some of the difficulties, you know, working with OLED and, and, and the cost and other factors associated with it. But DirectView really does have advantages um, over uh, these other technologies. And, and because there's just fewer layers that you're looking through, because there are actually, you know, three, three LEDs per pixel, um, you have benefits like a wider viewing angle, better color reproduction, a much longer life, um, as opposed to an organic LED um, with an OLED display. These inorganic LEDs with, with DirectView um, can last a really, really long time. So those are all definitely benefits for, uh, for our C-LED product. Um, the other huge benefit of a direct view system is that it's modular. So, um, as you can see here, you go from, uh, you know, the individual LEDs per pixel, which are combined into what we call a cell, which is the serviceable size of the product. Um, those cells are combined into a unit, um, which is uh, also can be also, also can be called a cabinet. And then the number of cabinets that you choose determine the resulting size, uh, resolution, and configuration of the display. So we're showing here a, a 4K a UHD 4K size, but uh, you can go much larger than this or smaller. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a, a rectangle. Um, you can have any, really any shape that you want. You can curve the display. So it allows for a lot more flexibility than um, some of the panel-based technologies and even some projection technologies. Um, our system is comprised of two kind of main products, uh, our display unit, which you can see on the left, and our controller, which will drive a number of display units on the right. Um, in addition to these, you'll have a frame and base, which we will uh, help you customize and, and uh, uh, manufacture with one of our, uh, our, our partners. Um, and, you know, of course, any other products that go into this, uh, this system, either, you know, upstream from it. Um, I'm not going to go through all the specs. They're, they are available online. And uh, I think John has added um, a link to a page in the chat where you can get some more information about uh, this display unit, but I did want to point out it is a uh, 1.2 millimeter pro uh, pitch product, which means the pixels are 1.2 millimeters apart. Um, we do spec uh, over a million to one contrast ratio, near 180 degree viewing angle, 140% achievement of sRGB, and a, a lifetime of over 87,600 hours. So. This represents um, running the display at full brightness, um, full power, and you could do that uh, 24 hours a day for 10 years before you reached half brightness. So it's an incredibly long life product. And that's why for many of our projects, um, this product, this display becomes a centerpiece of the space that it's installed in. And that's why we do, you know, we treat it as a, a system and one that, um, is part of your brand's vision or, or um, your, the, the vision for the space that it's installed in. Um, our controller is um, also uh, custom to our, our own product. Uh, you can run uh, HDMI or DisplayPort into it. And some of the other features you might see are uh, 3D sync. So you can run uh, active 3D up to 60 hertz per eye with the display. And there's also a, a reference sync here for camera integration. And the way this works is that each of these controllers will run up to 72 units. So uh, that 72 units is uh, can be configured into that 4K UHD size, which I showed before. But once you hit a 73rd unit, you would then daisy chain in a second controller. And you can do that up to, to 20 times. So it's a very, very large uh, display that it can result in. The core of our technology really is the LED technology, and um, it differs greatly from what 
is has traditionally been used in this space, which is a so-called surface mount device. Um, our LEDs, which we call ultra-fine LEDs, uh, could also be called micro-LEDs, are 100 times smaller than the SMD-based devices that are on the market. And because they're so much smaller, they only take up about 1% of the display. So over 99% of the display will always be black. And that is why we're able to maintain uh, such a high contrast ratio. Over a million to one um, is really that true uh, black surface area. Um, with a, an SMD device, um, as you can see here on the right, the pixels are packaged together on, on what's called a, a package. And when you do that and then mount that package to the surface, you end up seeing a lot of gray um, because you're seeing the, the package itself and the way that light interacts with that, that package. So that really is um, a very, it's a very unique technology for the market. We're definitely seeing more micro LED products uh, come onto the scene um, as time goes on. But, um, you know, we have really been using this technology um, since the beginning of, of CLED about, about three years ago. Um, additionally, for, uh, for a variety of reasons, because we're using these very, very small LEDs and because um, you can maintain a much more uniform light cone from those LEDs, you're also able to, we're also able to achieve a near 180 degree viewing angle in any direction. So horizontally or vertically, um, you'll be able to look at the display basically, you know, from the side um, and still see a picture with very little brightness or color shift um, at those extreme angles. And then, you know, closer to the center of the display, um, no color shift or brightness change at all. So that's a little bit about the technology. Um, I wanted to touch on our installation process, which is also uh, very unique. Um, this time-lapse vi time video, which you can all hopefully see, is from uh, Infocom last year. This is the 8K display that we did there. And you can see how, as these units are being constructed, they're being looked at individually. We have a, a special tool that we use to align every unit um, in a very tight tolerances uh, in, the, in the micron range for X, Y, and Z. And um, I think this is just as important as some of our LED technology. Uh, it really is what enables us to create a seamless display and a, and a single, pan, the look of a single panel um, with the end result. And as you can see, this takes a little bit longer uh, than, you know, the traditional way of constructing these displays, but you know, clearly we do this uh, for conferences and we did this in the week leading up to Infocom. We did it uh, for NAB last year as well. And so it is more time intensive, but definitely um, for the projects that we work on with this, this product, um, totally manageable. And, and we've had no issues with uh, installation timelines or anything like that um, for, uh, you know, as far as, uh, until, you know, at any point in the past. So, um, again, this is a, a unique process. It's, it is, I don't know of any other process, you know, that exists for any other product in the market that uses uh, this kind of, you know, very uh, tight tolerances for alignment. And um, once we do finish the construction with, with that tool, um, we then can go back and do a post-installation Z alignment to, to really get the display as, uh, as uniform as possible, as, as flat as possible, and as, as seamless as possible. Um, additionally, we have a color calibration process where we uh, can go by either each unit or each cell as a standard. Um, this also is the process that we go through when replacing a cell. So if there's uh, damage or for some reason a cell needs to be replaced in the future, you can actually get a new cell off of a production line, put it into your system. Um, that cell comes with certain information about the cell that was uh, captured in manufacture, and you can match that cell perfectly to your display. So this is also very unique. Uh, most other products 
on the market, you need to uh, do what's called batching. You'll have a additional 10 or 20% of LEDs that you will purchase with your initial system just in case you need to replace them in the future because those LEDs may never be able to be reproduced at the same color level or uniformity level. And so this is also something that um, is unique. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, with a, a very long life product, um, this is something that will benefit you in, in, in the years to come, you know, in the over decade of life that you may have this product. So, of course, uh, you know, the picture, the image of a display is only, can only ever be as good as the content that's fed into it. And um, this is, you know, obviously a, a fundamental part of uh, creating a great, astonishing image. So here are some just quick examples of different, uh, different installations we've done and, and how the content really brings that space to life. I mean, you can see on the upper left, this is the Shiseido space and the, the display and the content um, all work together to kind of create this really, really impressive uh, space. Um, we are able to take advantage of uh, very high quality content. I, mean, I won't go into each of these in detail, but these are considerations that you should uh, keep in mind when creating content for the display. You can you can create content that has a higher bit depth and a wider uh, color space uh, than other displays. And um, there are also considerations that you should keep in mind when uh, deciding on your signal flow. So, you know, their HDMI is great. There's tons of products on the market, obviously, uh, that make it more compatible and, and maybe easier to use in some cases. But uh, there are also benefits to using a display port, especially at higher frame rates. Um, and then, of course, um, the image compression is something that is is critical. And uh, when we're running uh, content most of the time for for conferences or other demos, we're trying to run as basically uncompressed images. Um, so, you know, DPX files or TIFF sequences, things like that, that really enable you to get the best version of your of your content possible. So where are we seeing this used? Well, um, automotive design is, has been a big area for us. We have some use cases online with uh, Honda and some of the other top automotive manufacturers in the world are using uh, CLED for their collaborative design spaces. This is a space where we've seen rear projection kind of evolve into direct view LED. And there are huge benefits that, uh, that you can realize by moving to, to this technology. Um, we're also seeing it in customer experience centers, gallery spaces, uh, as you saw with, with Shiseido. It's obviously a great way to, to as, as accurately as possible, represent your brand and, and your products. And then, of course, in the corporate lobby spaces, executive briefing centers, boardrooms, et cetera, um, they have been huge adopters of the direct VLED technology and some of the kind of uh, key installations for this technology have have been in lobby spaces you know across the world so so that's um that's what i got this is sort of the the fundamental elements of what we view creates a, a great end product, you know, an astonishing picture. Um, these, these three elements, technology, our installation process, and uh, content. So without further ado, if you have um, any questions, uh, we'd be happy to, to answer them. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Hey, um, we do have some questions. We have a number of questions, actually. And uh, we'd like to welcome back Johnny as well to join us. Uh, so let's start right at the top here. Um, Jim asks, what is the minimal resolution requirement for displayed input? Um, that's a good question. I mean, you could, in theory, just run um, a single unit. 
for a display for a display input um i would need to look through the specs but i think you're probably looking at a 480p or something like that whatever is covered by uh, hdmi spec okay great um paul asks where are the system components made so our system is completely TAA compliant. And um, I think I can say all, all of our manufacturing is done in Japan. Very good. Um, question from Scott. Uh, Scott asks about durability. Uh, I think he noticed in the Sushedo video that there were kids running right next to it. And Jason, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, durability and the way in which we embed the LEDs and, and even discuss a little bit about cleaning and why it makes it uh, more durable than other, um, uh, other types of uh, technologies. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, John, you're right. It, embedding is, is probably the right way to put it. So, uh, with other, with SMD technologies, the LEDs kind of sit on the surface of the display and you could actually go up to a display and, and pick an LED off with your finger. Um, our product is different than that. It's uh, much more durable, much more resilient. Um, you're right with, with the Shiseido space and other public spaces that we're installed in. Um, you know, while we don't recommend just leaving the display, you know, completely open without any sort of oversight um, it is much more resilient you can go up to it and touch it um, you know if you get fingerprints on it you can wipe it off with a microfiber cloth um, it's 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 very durable and very resilient um, we for that reason we uh, are definitely applicable for any uh, touchscreen applications interactive displays um, that's really a space where we we kind of excel so Very good. Uh, we have a question from Jim. Um, I know you mentioned, um, Jason, I, I know you mentioned the base, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit further on, on the dub and the frame as well. You can speak to both of those. Sure, yeah. So we have um, we have what I would call a kind of standard system. Um, the, the base, here actually, let me pull up a picture. Um, the base, which you can see at the bottom, um, there's kind of two black areas. So you'll, you'll see a, a larger black rectangle as the base, and then the dub, the display unit base, which sits on top of that. So um, the product is, at least by design, vertically supported. We've done some installations where we have uh, mounted directly to a wall or something like that. Um, but these pieces, uh, we have a kind of standard set but we also do a lot of custom fabrication with our, our third party partners to create, um, you know, interesting frame designs or dynamic frames or things like that. So even though we have this kind of set configuration, it's not necessarily set in stone. We have options to, uh, to change this around or whatever, but, um, but yeah, it is a little bit different. It's, it's vertically supported instead of being directly wall mounted. Um, but a lot of that uh, has to do with our installation process that, that I talked about earlier, so. Great. Um, question from Jerome. How do you handle live video input or live video conferencing that's so popular now? Um, it shouldn't be any problem. Uh, we'll take, um, like I said, we'll take an HDMI or DisplayPort input if it's a sort of camera integration, maybe an iMag setup or something like that. Um, like I said, you can, you can sync the camera to the controller, um, eliminating any sort of vertical banding or anything like that that might, might arise, shutter interference. Um, and then just to expand on that a little bit, because of the pitch of the display and because of the size of the LEDs, um, we've had virtually no issues with Mare or anything like that at least with a certain level of camera, I would say, you know, kind of any kind of pro consumer to, to professional camera and above shouldn't have any issue integrating with the display. 
Great. Um, and maybe as a follow-up to, uh, I think it was, let me go back. Uh, may, maybe as a follow-up to Jim's question, uh, I think we should also mention that there are, uh, we've worked with two manufacturers for, for the frame uh, solution. Uh, just going back a couple of, couple of questions. Yeah, and, and uh, so those two manufacturers are, are Draper and, and RP Visual. They've been great partners with us. Um, we've done a lot of work with both of them. And um, there are certain tools and things that you need to create the dub and create to create the, the base that they have um, they've developed to create these tools. So um, they've been great, great partnerships with us. Yeah, and on a, re a related question, we've got uh, we've got one coming in from Peter. He asks about, um, uh, I, I guess the, the the scope of work, or you know, the the, the splitting of the responsibilities between the third party um, third party um, frame installation and the Sony installers. So maybe you can speak a little bit about the installation process. And yeah. where where Sony's technicians and engineers um, come into play in terms of alignment versus the physical build. Sure, and and the first thing I'll say is that we really treat all of these projects like a full system. So you um, you know we don't sell C led through distribution because it really it's kind of a, they're project based. So um, we'll work with you um, either if you're a, a consultant or an integrator, design engineer. Um, or even an end user, um, we'll work with you from the very beginning to help design your system and lay out all of the kind of best practices uh, for the product. But for the installation specifically, um, the way it's typically done is that the fabricator will come in, they'll install the frame, um, they'll level it. We have to maintain a very exact level, earth level for the display. Um, and then after they're done, um, and usually that's part that's happening while, you know, for a lot of these projects that's happening while a space is still being constructed. So um, after that's finished and the space is sort of uh, clean at a clean state, our installation team will come in uh, all, you know, Sony engineers, uh, Sony personnel will come in and uh, do the installation for the display and the commissioning and the, and the, the calibration, all of that. Very good, thank you. Um, question came in from Yassine asking about um, third-party touch screen overlay solutions. Yeah, so, um, hi Yassine. Uh, so we uh, do have a couple that we've worked with in the past. Um, I can provide some more specific details uh, offline, but basically, I haven't found any reason why uh, any IR-based solution wouldn't work, um, and any uh, sort of gesture-based solution, of course, uh, will integrate with the display um, just fine. So, okay, and I have one last question talking about curvature. Can the display be curved? It can. So, so. We recommend staying to uh, about up to a seven degree concave curve. Um, beyond that, you can start to get some cross reflection in the display. So in certain applications, it's fine if you're, um, depending on the viewer position. Uh, so we can go up to about 10 degrees if that's not an issue, but typically we try to stay around uh, seven degrees or, or below, which is actually kind of a deep, it's kind of a deep chord if you if you map it out. Um, we can do a convex curve as well in just one or two degrees, um, but that's definitely something that we would be more of a little kind of a custom frame solution and, and custom project. Very good, Jason. Uh, I think with that, we have had our last question. I'll leave one more. One more second for anyone uh, who's got anything else on their mind. It doesn't look like it. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us.
uh, as always, I know your time is valuable, and uh, we really uh, appreciate you spending time learning more about Sony product and solutions. Um, I've put uh, a few links in the chat box, so please take a look at those, uh, both on the overall CLED as well as the individual components, the cell and the uh, controller. I also put a link in there to our previously recorded Tech Tuesday webinars. And as I mentioned before, this one should be up by the end of the week, should you want to review it. Um, I remind you as well that uh, should you uh, have any further questions or want to uh, discuss it more deeply, please, by all means, contact your local Sony account manager. And uh, as a reminder, we have some upcoming uh, webinars planned as part of our summer series. Uh, call your attention to uh, next week. We're going to go back to our PTZ cameras and uh, we'll learn some more about web user interface, NDI HX, and virtual NDI. Um, call your attention especially to July 14th, Tuesday, July 14th, when we introduce a couple of new business projectors. And um, the 21st, some new Bravia flat panel solutions. And then on the 28th, a new 4K SXRD projector. That'll be the flagship of our line. Um, let's see, uh, I got a question here. It says, uh, John says he doesn't see the link to the webinar. Okay, I will resend that, John. Um, and with that, again, I, I thank everyone. I wish everyone in Canada a happy uh, Canada Day tomorrow, July 1st, and everyone in the U.S., a happy and safe 4th of July uh, coming up this weekend. We'll see you next week. Everyone stay safe, and uh, thanks again.